So today we celebrate the Annunciation of the Lord. Uh, and I know uh, it's not March 25th today, which would make it nine months, but uh, because the church sees this is an important, such an important celebration, we do not skip it, but we can't do it during Holy Week or during uh, the octave of Easter because those take priority, so they bump it out to the Monday after Divine Mercy Sunday. So this year, Mary's going to have a short gestation period. Um, but this beautiful gospel today, which we've heard so many times before, uh, is always meet for new reflections to chew on and say, okay, what is God saying to me today? And uh, I know I've shared this before, but really what has struck me uh, over the last few months, whether I meditate on the Annunciation, really is just how Mary being the new Eve, how she reverses all that Eve undid with, uh, with her rejection of Almighty God. And so Eve and Adam, when, when they sinned, what happened? They were grasping at God. They're grasping at trying to be powerful or authority. They thought God was against them. Mary, on the other hand, may it be done to me according to your word. Letting things happening to her. Letting God work in her life, not grasping at it. Adam and Eve, what happens? God comes into the garden and they're hiding and covering themselves up. Why are you hiding? I was afraid because I was naked and so I hid myself. Mary, behold, the handmaid of the Lord. She's not afraid to show herself to Almighty God. Behold, the handmaid of the Lord. And this is where we're called to go. I just love uh, the image that St. Therese has where um, she says, you know, when she sins, instead of running away from God, she runs into his arms like that little child who has done some sort of a foolish uh, sin and knows he's going to get rebuked by his mother, but instead of running into a corner and with a sullen look on his face, he runs to her and says, give me a hug, I'll never do it again. How can she resist taking him to her heart, forgiving his childish wickedness, even though she knows perfectly well he's going to do it again the next time the occasion arises? And Therese used that image, and that's what we see Mary doing. She runs to the heart of Jesus. She runs to the heart of the Father. She's not afraid to show herself, even in her weakness, in her humanity. And yes, she has no sin, but she invites us also to look to, to God in the same way. In our sin, to run to Him and say, Behold, here I am. You know my weakness. You know my brokenness. Here I am, Lord. I come to do your will. Through the intercession of Mary, may we not run from God, but run to Him. May we be willing to expose the deepest darkness of our lives to Him. And say, behold, I'm not hiding from you. Here, look, shine your light and bring healing to my deepest darkness so that we can then be embraced by the Lord who loves us so much.